Good day, hi, and welcome. Uh, let's, uh, let's out. There we go. Okay, so just finishing up the jam. I, I just couldn't leave. I, I just, uh, good of a night. Uh, they had the barbershop quartet in there. Like, that was, oh, that's basically four guys. Uh, all right. Maybe we can get out of here without running anybody over. Uh, I'll tell you about the night in a second. Don't want to hit that tree stump again. <laughs> I lost, lost a fender the last time I did that, so... Uh, okay. This way. I'm gonna watch out with the drunkards. Uh, what a wow type night. Uh, what's this person doing? I don't know what you're doing. Where uh, are they going? Are they staying? Okay, go to... You know, I, I, I come here and I had three Coca-Colas tonight. Okay, three whole Coca Colas. But I know other people had, uh, you know, double shots of rye and all kinds of stuff like that. So uh, when you see somebody trying to back out, you usually let them go first. It's, uh, you know, the law of, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, fender preservation, I guess you would say. Uh, so what kind of night was it? How did it go? My very first time playing a fiddle live? Um, it went pretty good. I got a lot of good feedback. I, <laughs> the mics I was using tonight, very interesting. Uh, they were um, these little, uh, they look like drum mics. Uh, very, very uh, strange mics. I never used mics like this before. They seemed to pick up everything good. Everybody said they could hear the fiddle from one end of the room to the other. But a fiddle kind of cuts through anyway, whether it's loud or not. Um, a lot of people, one guy's like, he goes, that's not your first time playing fiddle. I said, no, 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 it was my first time playing live. <laughs> He's like, oh, you, you, you sneaky bastard. You know? like, no, 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 this is my first time playing live. Uh, and stuff like that. And, uh, but uh, everybody seemed to enjoy it. I think it was a little bit different. Uh, they weren't expecting that kind of flavor of violin. But uh, nonetheless, it was enjoyed. And um, I enjoyed it. Uh, so next week I'm going to bring out the 1713 uh, Stradivari and do the terrifying story because we are getting close to Halloween. Today is October 3rd at the making of this video and I'm on the way home. But what's really cool, I, one of the girls singing tonight, it's like they, they introduced her name and I was like, that name is a very unique name. Uh, uh, her name was Beth and I like I only ever knew one girl named Beth and that was back in high school and sure enough who is it it's her right so she kind of remembered who I was I kind of remembered who she was uh, I we had a class together but I just don't know what class it was if it was uh, drama if it was uh, music class whatever but I just remembered but man could this lady sing oh my god it's like <laughs> you know uh, yeah it's like it was pretty impressive I gotta say um that said, uh, yeah, it was cool. It's cool, and like uh, to run into people like that. It's like, okay, well, yeah, I kind of remember you. Yeah, yeah, it's like, okay, I kind of remember you too. Yeah, it's like, good, good, to, good to meet you again. You know, what I mean? and nice to see that um, people still have passion in their lives to, to do interesting things and all that. Uh, that's pretty cool. So the, the, she sang along with the piano and the great the sound man. He's kind of like the backup guitar player for everybody. Uh, that nice little sweetheart of a girl was there again. Their name is Anna. And uh, she was just finishing up her third song there. I wanted to stay a little bit longer, but uh, I've already stayed out too late tonight. I'm going to be you know, making a lot of noise getting in in the wee hours of the morning. But it's just the music is so good. But this quartet, let me tell you about that. Like That is like perfect pitch, uh, singing, four guys hitting, uh, oh, wow, the harmonies, the uh, melodies, the uh, barbershop. I've only ever heard one other barbershop uh, quartet in my life, or maybe, I can't remember if it was three guys or four guys or whatever it was. But, I mean, this was an experience, and the, they didn't need mics, man. These guys were good. The power of the range, when they really bring their voice up that. And it's like, I, I know my camera cannot cap, no matter how good it sounds on the camera, you will never understand how good it sounds live. It's just like, that's impressive. But these guys, they sing with a choir of about 60 people. So they brought up a two other guys. They were called uh, the the four... Oh, I'll, I'll think of it after. But the four... Uh, there's four of them. Four something, anyway. Uh, the four shops or something like that. Or something like along those lines. Uh, forgive me, I, I can't remember the name, what they were called. But, uh, oh my God, were they ever good. 
Um, perfect music for what I did leading up to what I did. Uh, let, let me let me uh, explain. Uh, I always say like the act before you kind of sets the, the mood and the tone. Now, the guy after me uh, was interesting. I never seen him before. He, he's all he came all the way in from China. He wasn't Chinese. He's uh, I guess he's uh, forces or whatever. And um, he came in and, and he did a couple of originals, a couple of instrumentals, and stuff like that. He was really good. Uh, he was very interesting to watch. He stays on his uh, has a big old tractor trailer there. Again, uh, shout out to uh, here comes another one. Uh, all the tractor trailers out there that um, uh, yeah, that's two in a row here. These guys are still working, so uh, as long as he stays on his side of the fence here, uh, right beside the most deadly part of the river here, where it's all twisty and stuff like that. But yeah, hats off to all those truckers out there. Like I always say, you know, like I'm coming home from uh, a jam night and they're still on the road working, making sure that, the, you know, uh, life still functions, you know what I mean? Uh, oh my God, dude, take your brights off behind me. <laughs> uh, this guy's going to be like right in my tail, he's blinding me. But anyway, um, getting up to what I was saying. Damn, those are brights. Those brights are really high. Uh, he'll be past me in a second. <laughs> I'll let him pass me anyway, just because I want to be blinded. Those lights are really bright. Okay, just go by me, dude. Just go by me. Oh my God, you're blind. I can't, I can't, like, he's, those lights are so bright, like, I, <laughs> I can't see, I can't see looking forward. Oh my God, it's like blinded me with my ears. Uh, anyway, holy just that guy's driving like a nut. Uh, let the nuts pass you. <laughs> but anyway, uh, the other guy I got up there, I think his name is Phil. I've seen him a couple of times. He's going to be playing there Saturday. And he did a couple of Beatles tunes. And of course, would he not, him and Greg not pull out uh, Let It Be Now. That was a little hard for me to listen to. And I'll tell you why. Because when I lost my mom, that was a song I was working on. And I could play it. I can't play that song without getting emotional. You know what I mean? I don't want to even talk about it too much. You know, uh, so he played it, and it was such a beautiful rendition. I never heard it played quite like that before. Him and Greg just uh, really knocked it out of the park. Now it was like, oh man, I hope this song could go on too long because I, uh, you know, I want to hold it together. You know what I mean? Uh, but it was beautifully done. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, apparently, in when Paul McCartney, he told a little story, I don't know if it's true or not, but he said when Paul McCartney wrote the song, he had a dream that the Beatles were going to break up, and his mother came to him in a dream. It was, his mother was named Mary as well, that's named my mom, and um, uh, told him, just let it be, you know what I mean? Like, it's, you know, some things you just can't change in life, right? So, everybody loves that song, and so he did that one, he did um, Goodbye, Little Help With My Friends, so he said a good tone. Uh, there was a guy there with a uh, fretless bass, a gold wing fretless bass, but the guy normally plays stand-up bass, and he goes, he goes, I'd love to bring it out, but he, you know, you can't fit a freaking fretless bass through the door, you know, a big stand-up bass like that. Uh, but it would be cool to see one of them, and I don't know how they get it into the building, but <laughs> I mean, it's bigger than a refrigerator. And he apparently plays the full 4-4, four, four, full-size, uh, full-scale uh uh, full scale one uh, that would be I would love to see that, that, that is, uh, yeah I played stand up bass a few times in my life there they had one at the old school strangely enough where um, this lady uh, that was there tonight uh, it's like the face looked familiar but the name as soon as they said the name it was like I only know one girl in my lifetime that had that name and, uh, but she was up there, but it was like, uh, when we went to school, I asked her, did you have Mr. Ridgway or Mr. Morrison as a music teacher? She said, I had both. I said, me too. I said, Mr. Morrison kicked me out of his class. They put me in with Mr. Ridgway. Mr. Ridgway, God bless him. I don't know if the guy's even still alive or not, but uh, him and I were like cats and dogs. We just did not get along. But, uh, you know what? Uh, musically, I respected the man, and he hated me as, like, a, I mean, when you're a teenager, you're an asshole to everybody. Not, <laughs> trust me, I got, like, asshole trophy awards. I was so good at it, right? Uh, you know, I realize now how much of a jerk I was, uh, but 
when him and I sat down and had the heart to heart about you know music and stuff like that, he was criticizing my playing and stuff like that. He goes, he goes, you got all these jobs, but and he and he, and he was honest with me. And he goes, he, 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 he closes the door to the music class and he tells me, he goes, Reg, he goes, and he goes, I'm going to criticize you and you can tell me to f off or whatever, but I'm going to give you some pointers because you've got potential. And you know what? I sat there and I took it, took his criticism, and he was right. He was right. My timing was my timing still sucks <laughs> to this day, but at least uh, I got something out of it. And before you knew it, there he was, kind of conducting me into some other hooligans. Uh, you know, uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe the guys felt sorry for us uh, or whatever. That, you know, these guys, you know, they're, they're not going to have an open hell, uh, you know, like he knew that we were going to all be laborers, <laughs> you know, I'm just saying that, he probably had the foresight to see that, we, you know, me and my hooligan friends were all going to be laborers, so at least maybe we can get some enjoyment through music, you know, he'll give that to us, right, and uh, so he did, and uh, so thank you, Mr. Ridgway, and I guess Bethan and I were probably in that same class together, uh, <laughs> I spent I spent as much time in that class as I did in the hallway. So <laughs> we'll just say, uh, but Mr. Morrison, he didn't tolerate me for like more than five minutes. Uh, I don't blame him. I, I would have shot a person like me. In school. I was so bad. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I got something out of it. But I didn't realize how much of a, a musician she was. Like, uh, but I did. She, we didn't run around the same circles. But it was one of those things that you just remember these people. You know what I mean? Like, so it's kind of weird. I haven't seen this girl probably since 1991. Yeah, we're in 2018, so that's a few moons ago. And you know, here she is belting out the tunes with a piano and a guitar, and it just sounds stellar. You know what I mean? And I really, really, really enjoyed that. And uh, yeah, like, it's not my kind of music that I listen to. But when you hear it live, it's just, it does something. So let's get to the fiddle. How did my fiddling do? Well, obviously, I don't really know any fiddle tunes that are recognizable fiddle tunes. Uh, what I do is I try to steal a half-assed hack version of between uh, Hillbilly Fiddling and uh, another trucker on the road here. Uh, and... Uh, Try to do some like half-assed Paganini kind of stuff. Uh, so it's not really classical. It's not really. It's its own thing. But what I just try to do is get some sound out of the violin, and I got some sound out of that violin. It was in tune fairly well. It, uh, I was worried about it going out of tune and, and not being able to play at all. Uh, you never know what these things. They, they, you know, they, they can be kind of finicky. But this violin is pretty interesting. I've only really tuned it a few times since I bought it. Uh, the E goes out a bit, uh, and the most I can tune it up is about a half step to, uh, at best, a half step low. Uh, usually it's a full step low, so it's like Cajun tuning, so, uh, you know, real, uh, you know, Appalachian style sound, you know, like, just, you know, it's slightly down. It's the same EADG, but just a, a full step lower, so whatever the notes go, one full step lower. Um, so it, it gives a, a darker sound, a more... Uh, you know, deeper, kind of ghost in the ship steam train sound, which is what I like out of that fiddle anyway. But it was nice to just tell the story about it and just show it to people. That was more what I really wanted to do. Now, next week, I'm going... Uh, um, I, I, I think everybody kind of liked it. I think it was kind of a bit of a hit-miss, whether they, it was the type of music they liked. But they, they uh, everybody seemed to like it. They, they were like, oh my God, screeching cats, screeching cats. Uh, but... You know, it wasn't perfect, perfect, but it was pretty good. It was pretty good. I felt good with it. Uh, the Rubens Train uh, tune, I think, did good. Um, obviously, it'd be a song that most people probably never heard before. None of that they would have. Well, and obviously, my little ad lib, uh, uh, make it up as like a long type of thing they never heard before. Now, because we are in October, because we are getting close to Halloween. Next week, should I make it out again, uh, I will bring out another film. And that will change things again because I'm going to bring out my infamous 1713 Strat. I could bring out two fiddles at a time, but I don't really want to do that. And I'll tell you why. Uh, I only have one fiddle case that I can rely on. You know what I mean? Um, but what I want to do, because the 1713 Strat is considered a cursed Stradivarius. 
I want to tell that story just before Halloween. Why? Because it will be a very cool story. And it will also do something else. It will uh, give me a second time on the stage. Um, I don't think I'm going to have these fantastic mics. Uh, those little stereo mics, I mean, they, they were, well, they were meant for four guys singing in a quartet right in front of it. So they kind of strangely picked up better when you stood back from them than when you got too close. It was, it was uh, very interesting that way. Um, so next week it'll just be a regular mic, and that's fine. Uh, the other thing, too, is that uh, the other violins I'll be bringing out can all go up to full pitch. So I'm going to do something else, but i got to work on a little diddly for a, to get a haunted violin sound. And uh, there's some uh, harmonizing and, again, little parlor tricks that I can pull out. So I don't really know what I'm doing as a fiddler, but... Um, I can get that, um, you know, it makes some interesting sounds so that it, it, the story just involves the people. That the violin will tell the, I tell the first half of the story verbally, but the violin tells you the, the rest of the story uh, through sound, right? So that's kind of what I want to do next week. But I would also like to play and sing a song on the violin next week as well. So, I don't know how many violinists has ever done this. We use a lot of trucks on the road tonight. Uh, one, two, that's uh, four, that's five guys I passed. Five guys I passed. It's uh, nearly, probably close to 12 at night right now. Uh, I don't know. Uh, but, uh, long story short, um, I think next week's uh, little violin thing will be pretty good. Hopefully people can tolerate it. But I'm trying to think of a song that I could play and sing at the same time. My very first time playing a violin on stage in front of a... There had to be like 50, 60 people in there. Uh, I play and I sang a song at the same time. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I think it went over quite well. Uh, I enjoyed it. Um, I didn't feel like I lost the, 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 the bowing too much. I was a little sloppy. There's no doubt about that. I mean, I'm not a, like... I mean, I'm a guitar player who plays violin, so I sound like a guitar player who plays violin. So, I got a lot more work to do in the next couple of years. But I, I can do little diddlies and that, that, that kind of thing. So, I'll do an instrumental next week. Um, my uh, whole thing, I don't think, took up the full... I think I did a little bit shorter than what I, what I practiced, but um, I don't know. Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. I only had two things planned for tonight, so... Uh, but that's okay. Uh, that, that's okay. That, that works as well. Um, the thing that I really like, though, is that... Um, it really fit in with the night. You know, like, it really, really worked with the act before me. Uh, and the act... Well, technically, I was the first act of the night uh, after the quartet. Uh, right after the quartet, uh, Ken, uh, the 80-year-old man, he always goes up and reads his poetry, and then they get on with the show. And uh, he was having a good time tonight. I mean, this i mean, this guy's 80 years old, so he hears barbershop music. I mean, he's in heaven. Like, he's, he's, he's living back... He's 20 years old again, you know what I mean? Uh, oh, yeah, he was he was having a good time today. I'm uh, very, very happy. He's like, like, oh, I go, I said, that, that kind of music must take you back a bit. He goes, oh, yeah. You know, I mean, at 80 years old, you know, like, what, you know, like, I'm not, I'm halfway there, you know what I mean? Well, a little more than halfway there, but, you know, what kind of stories am I going to be telling at 80? Uh, but anyway, yeah, so it's the first up on the, on the roster. Uh, Intergalactic Space Hippie did not show up tonight. <laughs> I, I think he would have been out of the theme of tonight. Uh, tonight was a, I would say it was, it was, it was a quiet night, but not a mellow night. If that makes sense. It was a very, um, had a nice vibe to it. It was lively and bright, uh, except for my dark violin playing sound, you know? Like, it, it was a very, uh, you know, kind of a winded down kind of night where the quartet, like, I mean, the quartet is just, uh, it's music you can, you can fall asleep to and wake up so happy, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's so uplifting. It's, it's, it's very spiritual in a lot of ways. It just, those harmonies just kind of, those harmonized notes just kind of really put it to you, you know what I mean? Like, I just enjoy it so much. So, like, I couldn't leave that early. So, you know, I, I stayed and watched everybody. I just, I didn't catch the, I guess, Anna's her name.
name. I didn't catch her for the uh, her last song. Uh, she was just she was just starting it as I left. It was like, but after her, I don't think anybody else is going up anyway. So the night was pretty much done anyway. As soon as the last person goes up, then they kind of pack it. Anyway. Uh, but what a fantastic night! Everything sounds so good. Uh, talking to Greg a bit more, the uh, sound man. I asked him if he was a professional musician. This guy, he's pretty much wrapped in it. He teaches guitar uh, guitar uh, lessons. He writes music for people. Uh, he does jazz and blues. Uh, stuff like that. Very interesting guy. And, and stuff like that. He's all the way from Brisbane, Australia. And stuff like that. And, uh, you know, and you get a lot of tips from these guys. You know what I mean? Uh, I mean, this guy basically, all he does is music. That's his entire life is music. Um, that's pretty darn cool to be able to, to make a living doing that. Uh, you know, and he, he's not like, I don't know how much money the guy makes, but I, I know once you get into it, yeah, you can make enough to survive off of You might not get rich, but there's a lot worse ways to be um, making a living. You know what I'm saying? So for me, I'm like... Well, I'm going to have to uh, get into the, you know, get my ass in gear, is, I guess the simple thing. But uh, the nice thing, too, is that um, you can kind of steal stuff from people, like uh, that Phil guy. This guy's a fantastic player. We were talking, a little guitar talk there. Uh, tell me about his, uh, he's got a Tac Mine uh, classical with a cut of 14 cutaway on it. We're talking about guitar strings, and he's got recording guitar strings on there. They're, they're, they, they, they don't they don't shriek when you, your fingers rub on them. Uh, he goes, they're like thirty bucks a piece, but you know they, they just sound fantastic. And that guitar, he, it, it seems to play very well for him, uh, and he plays very well. He's a finger picker, right? Um, which is uh, really, uh, yeah, fantastic musician that guy. You can tell he's been at it for a long time, you know. And. Um, I don't know what his accent was there. I don't know if he's British or if he's uh, Australian as well. Uh, yeah, kind of interesting, you know. Uh, but anyway, uh, long story short, uh, you can learn. A, there's a couple of songs he, had, he was playing tonight, and they had a, he had a lot of sing-alongs. Uh, and you, you take note of that because it's like um, the reason why you do is like you can sometimes say, hey, you know what, that song really worked well for him. I wonder how it'll work for me. Um, you know, and maybe you'll play it and you won't get the same reaction other times too. But that's the thing, when you play songs that have been around forever and a day and everybody knows it, you know, you, you know, they, they just, uh, there's certain songs you can play and you're just going to, they're just crowd favorites, you know what I mean? Um, but I, I tend to, I like doing that, but I also tend to like to bring in new stuff. You know, even if you only ever play it live once and never play it again, uh, that works too. You just you don't get the sing-alongs. You know what I mean. So you want a couple of tunes that you can get people singing along with. That, that's always great. Um, but it, you know, there's there's a couple of ways. You know, there's a couple of ways to skin a cat here. You know what I mean. Um, the way I look at it is that uh, if you can, um, you know, get a song that people know well enough to sing along with, you could follow it up with a song that they haven't heard before uh, because you got their attention anyway. Um, I think I kept everybody's attention fairly well on the fiddle. And like, again, it was, uh, I enjoyed playing it. I was starting to get into it, you know, like, I was like, okay, well, this is, uh, kind of what I, you know, this is what I was good, I was expecting and, uh, whatever. And it, it was a good reception, you know. Uh, so, yeah, I will do it again. But what else can I do? You know what I mean? Like, uh, that's what I find is the, the fun, fascinating part is what else can I do? You know, what, what can I throw in there that'll get people to go, ooh, ah, hey, that's unique. We don't have people do, uh, playing that. Um, so, yeah, it, it's, uh, I like expanding that. So, I mean, if I get good enough with the fiddle, I can incorporate that into my guitar act as well. Uh, and then whenever I get enough money coming in, I'll get another mandolin. And then now I've got three instruments I can pull out on stage. You can take the dynamic of the night any direction you want once you start doing stuff like that. You know what I mean? That is something that I really do strive for is entertaining people. You know? Uh, spending a lot of time, uh, you know, like really uh, giving people a unique experience. 
that's something that I gotta tell you guys, I'm the underdog there when it comes to talent. I mean, uh, I can admit that. I mean, these people have... Now, mind you, these people, they're well-rehearsed. Uh, and anybody well-rehearsed is always going to perform flawless. Or perform well. But to perform just about flawless is, is real. That's a different talent on the one-take wonder. Like I say, you, you play the night, and the night's gonna go like this, and you get no do-overs. It's like, okay, it's your time to go, go. Now play, try not to screw up. And I don't sit there and go, oh my god, what if I screw up? What if I, screw up? I, I don't even, that doesn't even uh, cross my mind. All I do is, because I know my job, right? All I do is I get on stage and I just try to hear what I'm doing, uh, you know, uh, get the sound to come back to me a bit. Um, that, that's, that's all I really do. I, I don't really. Um, go up there worrying about if I miss a chord or whatever. I don't take that stuff personally. Don't. Because uh, a person can, you can get a person that can play a few songs in a row completely, stellarly perfect and not screw it up. But it's almost impossible to play an entire night without botching a chord or, or something. The trick is how do you um, you know, keep it like the saying goes, the show must go on. So if you mess up a little bit, it's getting used to, okay, well, I kind of screwed up here. I'm losing the plot a bit. How do I reposition myself to get back into the tune? Uh, that's where uh, improvisation really helps you out. Like a guy like me is good at, at BSing my way through things. Um, like I want the guy sitting at that bar, he goes, oh, he goes, he goes, I can't believe that it was your first time playing a fiddle. I said, no, 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 it's my first time playing live. And I go, I said, uh, he goes, well, he says, you sounded really, really good. I go, well, thank you. I said, I said, I just got to make it up. I said, the idea is to pretend you know what you're doing, you know. He goes, oh, you sneaky bastard. You know, something, something along that line. Uh, but he enjoyed it. You know, that, so what's more important? That I played flawlessly or that somebody in the audience enjoyed it? And more than a few people enjoyed it, you know. Now, mind you, someday I might be able to belt out actual Paganini on them. And uh, that would be very, very cool. But uh, I'm a long way from there. Unfortunately, that lady that did the, that I was talking to last week that played the fiddle, she, she wasn't there. I was like, ah, oh, darn, because, uh, I mean, I would have uh, gladly handed that fiddle to her if she wouldn't have. But I know sometimes they, they don't like to play other people's fiddles because, you know, it's a total different animal, you know, like from one fiddle to the next. Now, I've got six fiddles. Uh, there's a guy, he seems to, uh, he plays darts at the, the, the bar down the street uh, every Wednesday, and he comes in and finishes off the night there. Uh, I can't remember the guy's name. I'm so rude uh, when it comes to names. I always forget people's names, right? But he was basically, uh, was, yeah, he sounded pretty good. But, like... Like, I was telling him about the fiddle, and I was showing it to him and stuff like that. And I, you know, I was explaining to the audience, like, the craftsmanship that went into this thing. And, you know, all the things that probably survived. You know what I mean? Like, how is this thing still around after 200 years? And here it is in front of you. Enjoy. You know what I mean? Um, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. So there's, there's all these little things that make the story. It makes the, you know, there's more to the, the open mics and performing live. Uh, than just getting up and playing songs. You're giving an experience, right? And again, you're a showman first, or showman, whichever. Own that. Um, you know, even if you're not the best at it, whatever level, something I wrote on my Facebook tonight was along the lines of, uh, yeah, I'm going out to uh, the Cafe 1870 and tonight. I'll be sharing uh, my 150 to 200 year old uh, Winehead violin. Um, you know, to, with the audience, and uh, you know, like no matter what level you play at, uh, when we share our, you know, our uh, talents, we share dreams. You know, and I want people to think that when we share our talents, we share dreams. And it's not just about you, but they get that too. Like I mean, the people that listen, like, I can guarantee you tonight. All I'm going to hear in my head tonight while I'm sleeping is that quartet. That's all I'm going to hear in my head. Why? Because it just, it, it's, was such a, um, such a enveloping sound that it really just, it, you know, you're so into it that you enjoy it so much that it just, I could hear that, uh, you know, I can't hit the pitches they were hitting, but that harmonies that they were hitting. Just, 
stellar. Uh, they were, I, I told them you guys can call yourselves a fantastic four now if you want. I mean, you guys were just amazing. You know what I mean? And then two other guys went up and did, did some of the quartets. And I guess it was from their choir or whatever. But they went up there too, and I'm like, oh my god! It's like, uh, what? The two guys just get fired, and two guys step in. That's amazing. You know, but they all—they're all from this uh, sixty-man choir that uh, you know. Uh, Plays, so it's like they all kind of know each other's stuff, but that's just phenomenal, you know. That's just phenomenal. And uh, so I'm wondering if there's going to be people tonight sleeping, and uh, maybe for the better or for the worse, all, all they might hear is that dark, dreary, ghost of the ship, steam train sound, violin that was playing there tonight. This lion head violin, you know. Maybe they were so fixated on this interesting lion head violin because I'm pretty sure most of the people in the bar probably never seen a lion head violin before. Uh, they're not that. There's lots of them on the planet, sure, but there's not that many of them on the planet. You know what I mean? Uh, so there's more likely than not you've never seen one, uh, including fiddlers. Uh, that's why I was kind of hoping that lady was there. I can't remember what her, she said her name was. I was hoping she was going to be there because I don't know how many times they're going to bring this thing out, right? The other ones, yeah, but this one, this one's a bit of an unobtainium. It's a little bit of irreplaceable. So, I know where this, the, the mate to this one, but it's not exactly like this one. This one's really pretty. This one's a, it's, it's, you, you could enter it in a violin show, you know what I mean? Like a, like a violin beauty contest. It would just, the character of it is just, it tells you. And there was a little bit of a character that came out of it tonight, uh, especially on the second tune there. It was starting to ring a little bit. It was starting to give me some uh, little tunes. Uh, that I, I, it was starting to give me some sounds that I, I wasn't used to hearing. Now, I did something interesting tonight, too. I used two different bows. The other bow I hardly practiced with, but that other bow, I thought, well, I'm going to try that bow for the second, too, because it's a little bit smoother than the first bow. The first bow, I kind of needed that raunchiness to do uh, you know, that more hillbilly stuff, you know? Uh, but uh, the uh, second one with the arpeggios and whatever, it was all in, like, D minor stuff, so that ghost, and that really kind of eerie sound, that D minor that I was doing. Uh, basing the pattern around the D minor. And uh, even tried a bit of staccato. It didn't come out quite as nice as I would have liked, but it was different, you know. Uh, but that, it's, uh, the main theme of it, I think, that, that, that chimey, wind chimey, kind of bellish ring to it that you get, I think that's... I was trying to staple that to the people. I was trying to say, okay, here's the main theme. Here's a couple of widdly diddlies in between it. And then I go back to the main theme. So tonight when they're sleeping, they're probably going to hear, you know, a, a symphony of cross between this quartet and this dark, chimey violin that, that, that just kind of going to haunt them for the night. You know what I mean? Uh, hopefully in a good way that it's just like, it's just like, it's euphoric. You know what I mean? Uh, and that's my, that's what I was hoping to do tonight. Now, when I bring out what I, the Hornsteiner violin, that thing is going to like just cut through people. I think it's so loud. Uh, I can't see what that does. But uh, the 1713 Stradivari, the goal with that one is to kind of not freak people out, but to kind of give them a really creepy, eerie sound, and then uh, do some like kind of devilish kind of stuff, so that when people, uh, you know, like they just. You know, like, these little notes are going to stick in their head. It's going to implant in their head, so when they're sleeping, they're just going to hear, like, these little... You know, these little kind of devilish kind of sounds in their head uh, next week. And that, I'm looking forward to doing that one. Um, then after that, I'll bring out the Hornsteiner, then the electric fiddle, then back to the guitar again, you know, if I don't have a gig by then. But the other thing, too, is uh, talking to a lot of musicians, uh, a lot of these musicians... Um, again, I feel bad when I don't remember people's names, but they're like, oh, hey, Reg, good job. Uh, uh, and there's some people that have come up to me and say, oh, yeah, I know, I saw you last time, and um, uh, really, really good stuff, you know, good job, Reg. I'm like, oh, you know. But again, I guess I have a name that not everybody has. You know, Reggie's an easy name to kind of remember because not everybody you know is named Reggie. You know? it's, not, you know, it's, like a, it does, it's not a name that blends in with anything. It just doesn't. Uh, I'm okay with that, and I like that. It, it keeps me unique, right? But uh, the other thing is um, that, uh, that <laughs> I was about to leave, okay, the dog that I am, uh, that pretty girl, the Anna girl, she, she, she's such a pretty thing, uh, she's, she comes, I'm just about to leave, okay.
okay, and I'm saying my goodbyes, and of course she comes and sits at the table that I'm at, and I get, I just, like, I feel so rude because I'm getting up to leave just as she's sitting down, right? But she's going there to talk to the sound man because the sound man's are the guitar player as well. So I'm like, I go to the bathroom and I come out of the bathroom and I'm like, well, I'll stay for one more. So I had three Coca-Colas that, yeah, the rebel that I am. Um, ran into a guy I know tonight there. Uh, I know him quite well. He goes, he goes, like, tell me there's something else in there other than Coca-Colas. No, no, I said, I'm driving tonight. Uh, I don't drink and drive, you know. I'm, not, I'm just not going to cross that, that habit at all. And um, we'll use a big stream of traffic by me. Uh, but anyway, um, the uh, thing is, is that I, uh, I guess the speed limit's not fast enough. Uh, oh, Mustang, that explains it. <laughs> back to the table, so I talked to her for a little bit, because I definitely didn't want to be rude. Uh, holy jeez, dude. Right. You're blinding me. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, so I talked to her for a little bit. I asked her if she was going up. So, oh, yeah, 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 I'm going up. Um, kind of one of those, uh, but I'd like to do a duet with her, because she sings very well. definitely have to practice it or whatever. Uh, it's kind of uh, strange when you don't get to practice with people or whatever uh, and, and going trying stuff like that, especially when they're not musicians, you know. Uh, but then again, I don't know what her music ability is. Maybe she's, she's a phenomenal musician uh, and, and, and I don't know. I've known her since she was a kid, but uh, I don't know if she ever actually played music or not. Maybe she did, maybe she didn't. Right? Uh, but, if, you know, a lot of people can sing. You know, a lot of people can sing. Um, so yeah, maybe, maybe might be doing some songs out of that. That'd be cool. Uh, I definitely got to start jamming with people there. But the problem is, is this is uh, like I have so many songs I want to play live, and uh, that's what everybody's. So the what can, like one person say like every time you come here, it's something new. Like they're like we never know what we're gonna get with you. Like it's it's always you know so many songs, and I probably know close to a thousand songs if we were to add them all up. Uh, can I remember them all? Probably not, but over the years, I've probably played well over a thousand songs. Now, there's some songs I'm never going to play live again, you know, like, whatever. But there are some songs that, you know, I'm willing to try. Stuff like that. And, again, going into a whole new genre here, uh, with the fiddle, um, you know, again, I, I would love to, uh, be able to belt out a few more and just see how it goes. 
Uh, the electric fiddle, I think, is going to be interesting. Um, but I'll be honest with you, I prefer playing the acoustic fiddle, fiddle over the electric. Uh, it just, although the uh, the electric one is a lot newer and it's uh, you know a little easier to play in some ways, it is heavier. There's that, but there's the uh, the idea that it uh, just it doesn't have that same character that the uh, acoustic ones have. But none of my acoustic fiddles have mics or built-in piezos or whatever in them. Uh, so you can't uh, quite uh, over a set of eyes. As long as it's not a deer. But uh, yeah, it's like um, yeah, it's, it's cool to bring something new to the stage. Uh, and it's new to me. I, like, again, I've never done that uh, fiddle thing before. So it was really nice to do that. Um, and it was nice to see people like it. Uh, maybe not phenomenally, you know, but they, they were definitely... Uh, I, don't, I didn't blow anybody's mind, but uh, definitely enjoyed it. Ugh. I can't even identify what that was. Probably raccoon. All kinds of squish stuff on the road this hour of the day. Poor little buggers. Roadkill Cafe, yeah. But, uh, oh, more eyeballs. Little stuff out tonight. There must be a storm coming out, all these. Time we see a little set of eyes on the side of the road here. It's like, okay, it's, like, it's the height of the eyes, I'll tell you, whether it's going to be a big hit or a small hit. I don't want to run over any little critters, but I definitely don't want to hit any deer or bears or anything big like that, that could be quite disastrous. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I'd like to see if I can get something really cool for next week. Um, tell the story, see what people, you know, like. Uh, the idea of bringing out a guitar and a fiddle for a jam night is a little bit, it's a little bit too much to uh, take out bring out. Uh, guitar takes up a whole table. The fiddle takes up more, right? And you got to worry about the fiddle getting knocked. Well, you got to worry about anything getting knocked off the table, but fiddle fiddle's nice and easy to manage. That's one thing I like. Um, yeah, the idea that uh, playing the fiddle live and singing along with the fiddle, uh, I think that's something that can really take out a place like that. Uh, it's the right type of, uh, because other people have done that. Like, uh, it's just they probably haven't done it the way I do. You know what I mean? Uh, again, I, I don't play in the same genres as most of the people there. And if you've been listening to some of the acts there, you'll see what I mean. Like, they're very jazzy, they're very uh, finger-picking. Uh, I can't even say there's any country western that I've heard there. It's all jazz, R&B, I've heard classical in there. Um, yeah, it, it's not something that uh, you um, you uh, what? The heat. It's not something that you uh, would say is a usual bar. Where a bar you usually have either rock or you have country, right? Where this is a little bit different. around with the uh, heat here. <laughs> it's not cold, but it's like, it's keeping the windshield from fogging up. And there's no lights on the, on the, that part of the dash, so you can't, you gotta kind of guess where, where the, everything is. Uh, yeah. So, playing live, the fiddle thing, acoustic, uh, I think it came out, out okay. I think it came out okay. The camera will tell me. You know, the camera will tell me uh, how well it came out. But the camera will never pick it up exactly the way I hear it live. But to me, it sounded okay. Uh, my vocals, obviously, it was a hillbilly song, so you can't do bad vocals on a hillbilly song, period. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, I don't think that's possible. Uh, just simply due to the fact that uh, hillbilly songs are like... Uh, well, it's a uh, hillbilly song. You know what I mean? Like they're not going to be 
the songs that uh, require stellar, stellar uh, in tune. You can get away with anything, right? But there are some of these people that sing amazing harmonies on these type of songs. So, you know, the, the, the levels uh, kind of uh, all over the place of what kind of uh, hillbilly song you're going to get. But I think I think I sounded cool. I think it was a cool tune that I played that uh, Ruben's Train. I, I, think, I think it's going to come out really cool. I've never recorded that one. Oh, no, I have recorded that one before. I think it sounded okay. Uh, so, we'll see how it comes out, you know, live. It's, uh, I think that's going to be interesting. I think that's going to be... Uh, I think it's going to sound really good. Just the way those mics were set up. Uh, Got to watch out for gear here. Uh, but one thing that I will say is... Um, Uh, I got lucky with the room. The temperature wasn't too different. Uh, the fiddle was, I, I think it was a little bit out, obviously. Uh, I didn't want to mess around trying to tune it more than what it was. Again, because, you know, especially in a different room, it's kind of one of those things you can either you get it rated right to tune perfectly, but sometimes trying and you're in a different room or whatever, a fiddle, you go to tune it and it just lets go. Like the, the string just kind of lets go and you just cannot get it back in tune. So I was like, okay, better to be slightly out and just kind of take mental note of that than to uh, try to, you know, rock the boat too much and uh, jinx myself. Uh, but the 17, 13 Strat, that one holds tuning pretty good as well. Uh, this one, not so bad, but the E, the e uh, peg on this one is worn out, so that's why I can only tune it up so high. But I think it sounded good. I tried to give them a little taste of the G-string on that one, to give them a little bit of power of it, uh, and it, it did kind of come out pretty cool, I think. Uh, everything else, uh, the arpeggios, I think, did really well with it. Can. <laughs> it's like, is that a deer about to go on the road or a trash can? Hopefully it's a trash can that we're about to jump out on the road. Um, yeah, uh, I'm going to do it again. Um, I do want to bring out the electric guitar, uh, but I'm trying to think of what songs I would play in the event with the electric guitar. What songs would I play in the event uh, the person before me was really mellow, or the host was really mellow? Uh, that's uh, the $64 million. Like, I can get away with the fiddle, I can get away with the electric fiddle, I can probably even get a, I can obviously get away with the acoustic, but everything else might be a little bit... Uh, the electric's a tricky one uh, to just play. Uh, like I made, mentioned in the um, uh, previous video, that having an instrument stand on its own, meaning no no backup to that instrument, here's the instrument, and it can produce you music without any holes in it. And if you're a musician, you know what I'm talking about, but if you're not a musician, what that means is it's like that the, the song doesn't just fall apart on you, that you got like these dead spaces of like where there's just no sound or nothing happening, or that you're doing a, a, like a guitar solo, um, that, uh, you know, halfway through the song, and again, it just sounds like you're just shredding in a music store or something like that, and it's no longer a song, it's just a guy playing a solo, uh, you know, just doing some chops. Uh, well, again, you want to uh, make sure um, that whatever it is, you, the piece you play can hold together to keep the audience there. So, that's, that's my goal. That's my goal. Um, now, playing stuff that's not recognized by the audience, that's, uh, as long as you play well, that's more important than what you're playing. Uh, tonight, I just focused on trying to play the best I could. Again, it, it, uh, I'm happy with what I did. Could I have done a bit better? I held back the fanciness a little bit, not to get too crazy with it, because um, although it was pretty, like, again, this is a... You know, kind of doing a little bit of a Paganini kind of ripoff of, of uh, going crazy a bit with the, uh, you know, where I played on the neck to give these outrageous sounds, you know, these outrageous cording 
arpeggios. Again, nowhere to the ability of Paganini. I'm not saying I'm Paganini by any stretch of the imagination. But what I'm saying is, is to give them uh, these weird flavors of, of, uh, of fiddle that they've probably never heard anybody play before. And it's hit and miss. I mean, there's some people that will listen to a guy like Paganini or people doing renditions of him because, again, he wasn't alive. <laughs> nobody was alive uh, when he was alive. So, But the idea that uh, he, uh, you know, playing tunes that by him, there's some people that don't like that type of music at all. You know, it's like, well, this is just noise, you know what I mean? Uh, Paganini, you might as well say, is the first heavy metal shredder, <laughs> you know what I mean, that we know of in history. Like, this guy shredded, you know. He was just, you know, busting, busting you know, these crazy song tunes out, uh, and whatever. Uh, so, anyway, my night has now come to an end, and I am now home, safe and sound, thank God. And, uh, it's been another great week. Can't wait till next week, and hopefully I get a, a full, full show pretty soon. Uh, the owner wasn't there tonight, so, uh, I'll have to follow up on that as well, but, uh, we'll see where that goes. I'm just going to shut this off, and, oop, shut that off. I can put that on, just so I can see what I'm doing. Just, I have to be quiet now, so I don't wake people up. All right, you guys have yourself a great night, eh?